What is going on guys, it's Dakota from Decobo Photography and in today's video we're going to be doing a 3 month review on my experience so far with the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2. This is one hell of a camera, and based off my three months of using this bad boy here, I can wholeheartedly say that I absolutely love the film experience. I'm immersing myself more and more each day with different type of film stocks, different techniques using this Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2, and just overall, I absolutely love the camera. And we're gonna jump into about five or six points today, explaining some of the things I like, some of the things I dislike about the camera, and what are our next steps using it. The first thing we're gonna hop into is the build of the camera itself. So this Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 is completely mechanical uh, and it just has a professional grade build to it. It just feels like, you guys know like things that you had or your childhood where it was kind of hard to break because of the quality and how nicely it was built. That can go from like different action figures, Barbie dials, things like that, right? That's how I feel about this Mamiya camera here. Um, the quality of it. It felt like someone took their time in building it. It is sturdy, it is solid, and it feels good carrying this around. Um, it's a great conversation piece for folks too. Folks see a old a film camera like this and the first thing they're gonna ask for is, oh, what's that? Um, it, you know, you, you only get that usually with digital cameras when you're shooting with like a giant lens on your camera, like a 135, the Sigma 105, the uh, 200 millimeter f2 from canon things like that but this bad boy right here uh it feels amazing like i haven't dropped it knock on wood um but you know i feel that it could survive a, a small drop that's how sturdy this thing is uh, i enjoy the quality because you want to feel good when you're shooting right you want to feel good with the equipment that you're shooting with and this thing right here from the build it just feels professional it feels sturdy it feels solid and that's one of the biggest things i want out of my devices when i am shooting is the professional feel the durability all the above so um, in terms of build for this camera for the past three months i'm going to 10 out of 10. number two is going to be the sound of the shutter and i wasn't even sure about putting this section into the video but then i thought why the hell not because this is something that i enjoy with my camera and it's something that I've read online and a lot of other people enjoy too. The shutter sound, the cranking of the lever, all the above, like that is just kind of like a magical experience. It is soothing, it is aesthetically pleasing when you are taking a photo. You know what, I'm just gonna do one right now because this thing is addicting. Here, hold up, let me move some of my film out the way. All right, you guys hear this? Let me go ahead and Oh man, and then the lever. Let's hit that one more time. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good sound. Um, and again, it is pleasing, especially when you are taking photos. Um, you hit that lever and a lot of your models too, at least the ones I've worked with, they're like, oh my God, that sounds so nice you know, rather than just hearing that like digital shutter firing off every time. Um, it is, you know, it's it's pleasing. It's it's soothing to the mind, it's soothing to the ears. And again, uh, especially when the photos turn out, it makes the entire process so much better. Number three is the waist level viewfinder. Now, I know there are mixed opinions about this, but I absolutely love the aspect of shooting from the waist here, it gives another perspective to it. Um, I also love the fact that there is a magnifying glass option. You can switch that baby on and then uh, be able to magnify your image to make sure that you're in proper focus or not. Obviously, I can't look now because the lens cap is on, but um, being able to, again, just kind of look inside of here, frame your image properly, it feels nice. Um, it definitely does feel nice when you are shooting down here. I've seen some complaints about how you know, you're hunched over and it's bad on your back, especially if you don't work out and all might be very true points, but they do have a eye level prism finder as well, which I plan on purchasing. 
pretty soon because I do miss taking pictures like this. But at least for now though, and as well, the waist level viewfinder, it gives you another perspective on your images. So it's not just always taking photos up here. You're looking down here, you're framing, you can get like lower angles and whatnot. So um, I love this thing. It has definitely been a different process. I thoroughly do enjoy the waist level viewfinder from the perspective to the different just aspect of shooting differently. And again, uh, I am gonna be purchasing an eye level viewfinder in the near future so that I can take more eye level shots. Uh, then also probably do a video comparing waist level uh, shots versus eye. Uh, level view shots. So you guys let me know if that's something that you're interested in in the comments below. Number four is a slower workflow. And I mean that in an absolute good way. And I will say I've talked about this in some of my other videos while shooting film. When I was using my digital camera, I'm firing a bunch of shots because I know eventually I'll get a decent shot after getting, you know, framing my model and whatnot. Um, with this thing right here, you're only limited to your only. <laughs> With this thing right here, you're limited to 10 shots, just 10, okay? So you really have to worry about composition, you gotta worry about lighting, you have to worry about like the scenery that you're in, every single aspect matters, okay? It all absolutely matters because with this camera, you only get 10 shots, so you really have to make sure that you're paying attention to everything. Hey, if the models, you know, glasses are a little crooked or something, if they're wearing glasses, you gotta make sure you correct that. It's attention to detail. And the slower that I work, the slower I work on framing uh, my composition and making sure it's the best it can possibly be, the better the images turned out. And that's not a bad thing at all, again. And um, it takes practice, right? You know, you have unlimited shots, like I mentioned, with your digital camera, at least until your SD card is filled up. You're just shooting away um, and you know within like those 20 burst shots that you get you're hoping that maybe two or three of those turned out really really well whereas a film camera you're really slowing down you're really being selective with the shots that you take because one film is effing expensive and two again you have a limited amount of shots per roll so Again, you want to make sure that you are getting the best images possible. So you're taking a slower time, making sure everything is good. And that's a great thing for me because slowing down really does improve my process of photography as a whole, as well as make sure that my images turned out the best they can possibly be. Number five is going to be creativity. And this is going to be an interesting topic to talk about just because creativity isn't bound to what type of camera that you have. I want to start that off. Start off by saying creativity is not bound by what specific camera that you have. It's all about the ideas up here and how you plan on implementing and bringing those to life. In my scenario, like I talked about in my unboxing video, um, I felt that a lot of the techniques and whatnot that I've used with digital cameras, I've kind of, I've gotten really good at that, right? And not saying that they weren't nice looking images because they were, it was just the fact that I just felt that they lacked something, right? They lacked that creative edge. So I would go in and just look for different ideas that I can do. Um, but eventually, you know, I kept thinking to myself, every one of my digital images, I try to take the digital edge off. I keep adding film grain to my images to try to bring that old, like vintage film look. So I just thought it was time to migrate over to film if I was going to keep doing that with my digital images. And hey, um, I made the jump. I made the jump three months ago. I got a Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 and I haven't looked back yet. So the whole aspect of being creative, this Mamiya camera brought back a lot of the creativity that I had. It made me want to go out more and shoot and made me want to put on different concepts that you know I thought of before but told myself eh, I don't know if it'll look right um, I've just told myself hey I'm gonna go give it a try and that's different uh, with this because I don't know what the images are gonna actually look like until my film is processed and developed so um, it's a scary thought a lot of the times but I'm extremely confident now in my ability to go out and really create different things that I had like stored up here and I'm now like working with different, awesome, like a bunch of different people to bring these images to life. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 or any other film camera that you do have. Um, this has been a great process with me so far using this for the past three months. I can't wait to do another one after another three months and then a year and then so on and so forth. 
and really see the type of images that I'm able to create throughout this time. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a big thumbs up as well as click the subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss any upcoming content. Thank you again and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.